and welcome to Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja. Well, this is a show that focuses on providing you with solutions to your health-related issues, lifestyle and much more. Well, viewers, cardiological emergencies can occur anytime, anywhere. So if such kind of situation arises, what should be done in the initial stage? And to discuss on this, we have with us Dr. Rituparna Borwa, cardiologist from Apollo Hospital. So not to waste any more time, I'll trade away move to him and talk more on the topic which we have taken today. Well, doctor, thank you so much for coming to our show. So uh, today the topic uh, which we have taken is a cardiological emergency. And uh, we have seen that these emergencies can arise at any time, at any place, and we have to take a care of it. So initially, like uh, at first, like what would you like to start up with? What would you like to tell our viewers on cardiology emergency? Cardiology emergencies are very important. Mm -hmm. And then from what the patient's perspective also, and for the physician's perspective also, cardiologist's perspective also. Hmm. And uh, there are a lot of emergencies, but uh, two most important emergencies that we encounter uh, is that one is the heart attack. That is very, very important. And now everybody knowing that the incidence of heart attacks, number of heart attack patients are increasing day by day. Absolutely. And also in the second, many of the patients come to us with heart block. Hmm. So that I'm going to discuss what is the difference between heart attack and the heart block. Okay. So, heart so block it's two patient, different yeah, things. Two, two different uh, entities. Okay. And the heart block patient, basically, they come to the emergency department with slow heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So in medical terminology, we define it as bradycardia. Mm -hmm. So that means the heartbeat is too low to sustain life. So okay. we call it as an electrical block. Mm -hmm. And these are two uh, most important emergency we encounter in, in our day-to-day -day practices. Okay, so day-to-day -day practices, these two emergencies uh, which you encounter. So uh, like suppose if we start with the basic thing that is the symptoms, like how will a person come to know that uh, if there is a symptoms uh, in that person that they, he will come to know that they have a heart problem and they should immediately go and see a cardiologist at the earliest. Symptomology are very, very important. Okay. So important, in, in, if I talk about the heart attack, hmm. few symptoms come to my mind. So most okay. important is the cyst pain. Hmm. So the patient will uh, complain of excruciating pain hmm. and that is just behind the, uh, the cyst bone hmm. and it will be very severe okay. and then and there will be radiation. It mm -hmm. means that the patient also feels simultaneously pain hmm. in the arms and maybe in the uh, neck also. So this is called angina, that is the uh, definition of this cyst pain mm -hmm. that uh, patient suffering from heart attack. And also some patient can uh, suffer breathlessness, shortness of breath, that is one important symptom. Okay. And it should be very severe sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then also sometimes patient can feel uh, uh, palpitation. It's meant that the patient can suffering from very fast heartbeat and then mm -hmm. uh, they can feel it, the heartbeat is very fast and then uh, we call it as palpitation. Okay. And also uh, sometimes patient come to us with uh, symptoms of uh, fainting. Mm -hmm. So fainting could be also a symptoms of heart attack. Okay, and fainting. It, yeah, fainting. And, mm -hmm. and fainting and uh, in uh, common people, we, uh, they can define it as a giddiness. Okay. okay. So, and then giddiness could be also a manifestation of uh, electrical block that we already I have mm -hmm. told that uh, sometimes some patient come to emergency department with As low heartbeat. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. These are some of the common symptoms people mm -hmm. do have and presenting in the emergency department. So lots of symptoms like uh, viewers uh, we are discussing at this point in time on the cardiological emergency and uh, our numbers are flashed on your television screen. So if you have any queries regarding the topic which we have taken today, please uh, do call us and uh, Dr. Rituparna Borwa is in our studio. He will give you all the answers. All right, doctor, coming back to you again, lot of symptoms like uh, and very basic symptoms like if a person is finding any kind of those symptoms in their any person or any household people. So they should immediately go and see a hospital or they should wait for some time. What do you suggest? I think uh, most important message I want to carry mm -hmm. to the common people is that we should not diagnose cardiac problem at home. Okay. So if any patient uh, suffering from any symptoms like uh, we have already discussed, so immediately I think they should rush to nearby mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. and they get the assessment done. So the most basic assessment they should do is the ECG. So and ECG interpretation is also important and who is doing the ECG interpretation is also very important. Very important. Okay, so these things are, and nowadays our technologies are, are very equipped and uh, equipments have also advanced. So uh, there is a, not for attention for the attendants or the family members to uh, take care of because uh, they can come to the hospitals immediately and they can find out the solution at the earliest, isn't it? Yeah, technology is advancing mm -hmm. and there is a system of tele ECG also okay. so that uh, they can actually go to any nearby hospital and if the tele ECG 
uh, system is available in that particular hospital mm -hmm. and they can just uh, download the ECG to the computer and then uh, that can be read by an expert okay. and sitting somewhere in, uh, in uh, mm -hmm. tertiary hospital. So is it a software which you are talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's a, it's a software and mm -hmm. then uh, in our hospital we are actually uh, functioning on it. All right, that's great uh, because like those softwares and those are uh, technicals and those equipped uh, and I mean because like those things are which is available in hospitals gives an assurance to the attendants that uh, whenever they are going to attend or whenever they are going with their problems they will come out with a solution that's isn't sure. it doctor. Yes, sure. So uh, doctor is every chest pain because like uh, there are a lot of queries and a lot of uh, queries in everybody's mind that if I am having a chest pain regularly so is it related to a heart problem or is it something else? Every chest pain is not cardiac problem. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be assessed properly okay. by different uh, investigation. And um, as I already told you, ECG is very, very important, but it's not uh, that ECG will always manifest. Okay. Because even if the ECG is normal, the patient mm -hmm. can still suffer from heart attack. Mm -hmm. So ECG, echocardiography, echocardiography is uh, almost everybody is knowing what is echocardiography. Mm -hmm. So it is an ultrasound of the heart. Okay. So we can assess the cardiac pumping, we can assess the different segment that is contracting in the heart. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, tell about the uh, any chances of the patient is suffering from heart attack. Mm -hmm. So And also some uh, blood test. These are, these are very important and we should do the, some blood test uh, that we uh, now it is almost uh, known by the common people also because uh, we call it troponin I. So this is a biomarker, it's a kind of enzymes that is released into the blood circulation if some uh, suffers from heart attack. Mm -hmm. So it can be detected very fast and we call it a point of care technology okay. and uh, so everybody should be aware of this. Okay, so everybody should be aware of this and these are the things like if they visit to the hospital they will be given assurance uh, by the doctors and also by the other authorities that uh, these are the facilities which the hospitals are providing and there is nothing to worry if any disease has occurred so uh, there are doctors uh, to give you all these solution. All right, the doctor, uh, like we were talking about uh, two types of uh, cardiac emergencies, a uh, heart attack and one is a uh, like Blocked. Electrical block. Electrical yeah. block. Yeah. So those two are different yeah. and those two are different. Those are, if, are the symptoms same or are the symptoms also different? Normally the heart attack patient, hmm. uh, if uh, the patient is not, not diabetic because you know the diabetic patient do have neuropathy. That okay. means they're involved in NARPs. Hmm. So if the NARPs are involved, the patient may not have pain. So hmm. uh, they may have some different types of symptoms that I already discussed with you regarding the breathlessness, palpitation, hmm. fainting attacks, all kind of things. And, uh, but uh, normally the patient do have chest pain hmm. and those patients with electrical block, they do have fainting attacks or near fainting attacks. Hmm. So these are some basic difference between the electrical block and the heart attack. But okay. mind it, it is very important also and hmm. uh, the common people also should be aware of this, that the, this two problem, like uh, these two emergencies, like electrical block and the heart attack, heart attack. can coexist. Oh, okay, can coexist. Yeah. Okay, so they can, they can coexist, uh, but there is a solution like if... Yeah, they... these are solutions because mm -hmm. uh, there are very good medicines available mm -hmm. uh, and then we routinely doing angiogram, immediate angiography mm -hmm. and check for the heart, uh, that means circulation blockage that uh, actually leading to a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Then we can immediately open, open that particular block, we call it as primary angioplasty, that is mm -hmm. very, very important. And also in, in case of electrical block, if the patient is uh, suffering from very low heartbeat and uh, that is... Uh, uh, difficult to sustain uh, mm -hmm. life. So in that case, we can uh, go for uh, okay. pacemaker implantation. And this pacemaker, pacemaker, we can immediately place inside the heart. We call it a uh, temporary pacemaker. Mm -hmm. So that it can be sometimes replaced by the permanent pacemaker later on also. Okay. Uh, so doctor, uh, like uh, if we talk about the age group, but nowadays uh, we have seen that heart attacks and heart problems are not only related with the age old people or the elderly people. It has been seen in the younger generation as well. Uh, so what could be the reason behind that? Is it because of the stress which we always talk about or like the lifestyle activity and all? So what do you have? Suggestion on Actually, that. these are multifactorial. A lot okay. of risk factors are involved mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And the younger generation are suffering um, heart attack uh, that uh, statistics are telling us. Mm -hmm. Basically, that is probably adopting to the lifestyles that uh, mostly related to the sedentary habits and the high calorie intakes, mm -hmm. uh, use of tobacco. Okay. So any form of tobacco, that is very important message actually I want to share uh, with you also and to carry mm -hmm. to the common people also. Mm -hmm. Any forms of tobacco, is dangerous. So okay. it can lead to a heart attack mm -hmm. or a cardiac problem. 
All right, so any form of tobacco is dangerous because it can lead to your heart problems as well and especially talking about the younger generation because heart problems have not only limited uh, with the elderly people but nowadays we have seen in the younger generations as well. So stress, what we talk about stress, stress is a part but uh, if we talk about the activity and the lifestyle which we are leading is uh, tobacco is straight no and uh, there are other activity substances which is also straight no because it can lead to your heart problems. And two important uh, disease that is uh, basically heart Hypertension is a risk factor, but we mm -hmm. consider it as a disease because it's becoming so widespread uh, in our country. So now it's very difficult to treat, but uh, our uh, Indian uh, uh, heart society and then different uh, societies uh, actually taking their lot of efforts mm -hmm. uh, to control the hypertension. And this is hypertension and diabetes. These are two leading risk factors that can lead to a heart uh, cardiac yeah, problem. Yeah, these two risk factors has to be listened down because if a person is hypertension, so regular me medicines intake is very important, isn't it, Doctor? Correct. Because uh, we have seen that the medicines, the stopping of medicines and the decisions taken by the attendants at home is also uh, seen these days. So on that note, what you have to say as a doctor, that if anything, like you find out that you are cured, but you shouldn't like stop in between and we should always consult your doctor and see that if they change your medicines or they, if they ask you to stop it, then only you do it. Sure. Okay, so these are some of the tips and not, uh, talking about the younger generation, this stress, lifestyle, if we are talking about stress and lifestyle, how important is for the person to change their lifestyles to lead a very happy life? See, this is a competition world. Mm -hmm. So we have to do our own work. So mm -hmm. it's important. So the, my point of view is that we have to keep some time for us, for our own health. Like we can do at least, we can spend one to two hours time uh, burning our calories, doing some right. regular exercise, meditation to keep our mind and the um, uh, this body healthy. So this is important. I think it's very important to at least uh, snatch some, some time for mm -hmm. us, for, for our own health, so that uh, it remains uh, healthy. Okay. And uh, doctor, uh, like in your daily affair, uh, you have seen a lot of patients with heart problems and uh, like a lot of attendants also have a lot of questions in their mind. They come to you and they ask you, so how difficult is for you to handle those attendants rather than the patients? Yeah, it's a very difficult, uh, conflicting question actually. Mm -hmm. Then um, we encounter this type of questions uh, in our daily practices. So whenever a patient come, they have uh, some uh, preset mind mm -hmm. that uh, these particular medicines may not be helpful in cardiac problem. Uh, but uh, it's not like that because uh, we have been uh, rigorously studying in dif uh, different aspects of the cardiology. Okay. And, uh, and sometimes uh, the innate information, mm. maybe sometimes also uh, Take, it, uh, take them to an uh, Absolutely, confliction. because a lot of information yeah, on the internet is, yes, and uh, we have seen is, generally patients yes. and attendants, they take information and come to the doctors and I have been seeing this. So these are very important yeah, very things. Very important is that the communication mm. with the physician and mm. the doctor, uh, that can uh, sort it out a lot of issues. Okay. So a uh, psychological study is also very important. Doctor, we'll take uh, a discussion on this, uh, but right now we'll have to slip into a short break. All right, viewers, uh, we'll slip into a short break, uh, but do come back soon because uh, we have lots more on the other side. Welcome back viewers, you're still watching a Good Life, the health show with me Pooja and we are having a fruitful discussion on cardiology emergency. Let's uh, proceed with that. Or right, doctor, earlier to the break, uh, we were talking about the psychological study because uh, nowadays uh, patients has to have a lot of uh, stress and uh, they have to have a lot of psychological problems as well. So on that note, how hospitals help them to have a check on that and if they are not willing to go for a surgery or if they are not willing to go for a treatment. So how important is for a psychologist or a, do you suggest that you should always sit with a psychologist or you need to study their history as well. Yeah. If we talk about the cardiac emergencies and the mm. patient suffering from heart attack, mm. they do suffer from depression Absolutely. and other kind of psychological problem. Mm. But in our hospital, we do have the facility of psychological counseling to the patient. And then we, communication as I already mm. told that communication to the patient and the, uh, this attendants are very, okay. very important. And mm. how well you can communicate, mm. actually you can uh, resort a lot of uh, yeah, problem from the yeah, yes yeah. you can uh, it's very important mm -hmm. to understand the mind of the attendant and patient also very mm -hmm. important and then uh, i think uh, every hospital should have that facility regarding the 
psychological counseling mm -hmm. and then how the patients are behaving and responding to your treatment okay. I think is very very important. All right. Uh, so if any heart patient comes to your hospital so what is the first procedure or what is the first thing a hospital does like do you immediately uh, like uh, make that patient uh, in the ICU or you just ask them to have a form and what are the procedures like for a heart patient to be done? Patients usually attend the emergency department okay. and then the emergency department we check all these uh, uh, basic uh, vitals for okay. example uh, we Those check the blood yes basic done. test like this blood pressure we check mm -hmm. and the heart rate we do ecg okay. and then we check the saturation basically what is the oxygen level in the body that is we call it the saturation mm -hmm. uh, oxygen saturation in the uh, human body that we check and then we check blood uh, sugar also so mm -hmm. these are some basic tests we used to do okay. and then uh, according to the ecg finding mm -hmm. and then also we do certain blood tests also to find out if the patient is suffering from any kind of heart attacks or mm -hmm. not some uh, biomarkers we call it cardiac markers okay. we do those uh, tests and uh, based on the reports so and you also ECG. take out the history as yes. well and because uh, already you've had yes the of course the, the test history earlier. is very very important mm -hmm. and then accordingly we should be very very uh, fast and then uh, very very effective treatment uh, modalities should be provided to the uh, mm -hmm. uh, this this type of patient because these are very sick patients so it's okay. very very fast mm -hmm. so, so things are already yes, ready from yes. before and then if we uh, consider that the patient is suffering from heart attack, mm. so we give certain medicines. These are life-saving med medicines that uh, we need to discuss about the aspirin. Okay. So aspirin to be given and there are other collateral medications uh, uh, like the other some medication, blood thinners. So in the common people, they, they, they were aware of like uh, this blood thinners. Mm -hmm. They give blood thinners and certain other medicines to just for, for the initial treatment to begin. Mm. And then after that, uh, uh, we do the echocardiography to check for the heart pumping. Ejection fraction is very important uh, number. Mm -hmm. uh, ejection fraction actually uh, defines the heart pumping capacity. So the ejection normal ejection fraction is 55 to 70 percent. So and then if the ejection fraction is uh, below that, like below 55 uh, percent, it okay. could be 40 percent, 30 percent. So that means the patient's pumping capacity is declining. Mm -hmm. So it it is because of the heart attack. So okay. in that case, we have to immediately intervene. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in our uh, hospital, uh, we have the cath lab facility. That mm -hmm. is a cardiac catheterization lab facility. Okay. So we ask uh, uh, the patient to go for the angiogram. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there is a direct vision uh, assessment of the blockage under the x-ray. And then you check for the uh, blockage. And if possible, we can open it uh, stands and the balloons. We call it angioplasty. Mm -hmm. uh, this is called angioplasty. And this is mm -hmm. uh, uh, successful in more than 95% of the cases. And okay. this is the most, uh, uh, it is the best form of treatment mm -hmm. that uh, we can ever uh, provide to a heart attack patient. Mm -hmm. uh, and second uh, mode of uh, treatment is that we give a thrombolytic therapy. Thrombolytic okay. therapy in common uh, language, that means we inject a certain medicine into the blood circulation and basically it lies the clot. Actually, mm -hmm. why heart attack happens? Because the clot sits uh, inside the heart arteries mm -hmm. and the artery flow uh, gets uh, hampered, it's mm -hmm. blocked. And then the most important is that we have to lyse that particular clot and then uh, to make the blood flow uh, starts inside the heart right. arteries. So yeah. there are a lot of factors and there are a lot of like, but those are things like uh, how a person tackles it and how a patient tackles it, it depends on that. You have to check the pressure, you have to check the sugar. Yes. So if it exaggerates or if it's like more than, do you wait or do you go with the surgery or do you go with the like treatment? The sugar can be controlled okay. because we have the insulin and we mm. can immediately control the sugar. Mm. But the most important is that we have to halt the heart attack. So if we, uh, if this problem continues, continues, so the patient heart pumping will decline. So decline. it should be actually 55 to 70 percent, but it, mm -hmm. ca it can come down to 20 percent and then mm -hmm. the, pa the patient's survivability will decline. So in less, it will be... Uh, very very less so okay. patient may not survive also mm -hmm. so this is very very important to save the life mm -hmm. so absolutely because the most so saving, yeah, the, life yeah, is saving the life is more important mm -hmm. so immediately we have to mm -hmm. give uh, any form of uh, medication that is going to save his life so mm -hmm. first i already mentioned about the primary angioplasty angiogram and then the, uh, you can put balloons and distance and then open up the artery that okay. we uh, call it uh, primary angioplasty this is life-saving no mm -hmm. doubt about the whole world is uh, doing it mm. and the second form of treatment is the injecting a molecules that can lyse the clot and and okay. make the artery blood flow starts all so right doctor we'll proceed yes. with that yeah. we have a phone call let's take sure. the phone call uh hello um hello my april for a show to fly so more patient talking uh when i came on more my boy was with a 67 which is person 
ডায়েবেটিক হয় নেকি কষ্ট <laughs> হোৱা <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that the cardiac check-up is complete. Like we should do ECG, blood pressure check, pulse rate check, complete assessment to echocardiography that already we discussed in the past. Echocardiography, heart or ultrasound. Complete assessment to the past, proper diagnosis. I think you should should not delay and immediately do all these necessary investigations. All right. Yeah, All right. Thank uh, you, doctor, for your visit. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much for calling. So these are some other problems like uh, related and immediately you said that you have to just immediately have a diagnosis part, no? Yes. Okay. So uh, we were talking about uh, the things and let's uh, proceed with that, doctor. So those emergencies has to be tackled out when a patient is there and uh, everything, is, uh, everything is ready. You said that everything is ready, but sugar can be controlled. And if not, then what do you do? If sugar is not controlled... Hmm. Uh, we can uh, we have a lot of uh, armamentarium okay. in terms of the pharmacology means we term, in terms of the medicines mm -hmm. we can use uh, tablets we can use uh, insulins that uh, almost uh, everybody knows about this so okay. it's not very difficult to control blood sugar okay, so at it's that not very really difficult time. as yes. well okay uh, doctor we are really uh, running short of time so yes. on the last note or there are some of the things we need to touch upon like there are other treatment methods also so what would be that if you could just tell our viewers just few few uh, things i just want to mention mm. these are two basic uh, most common cardiac emergency we discussed like okay. heart attack and electrical, electrical. block there mm. other types of uh, cardiac emergencies are also there okay so like uh, aortic dissection these are very very difficult to mm. treat also mm. the, the blood the main um, pipe that is uh, removing the blood from the heart this is a common just to define okay. or to make the other people Understand. understood yeah. so we, we can have a problem in that particular uh, heart pipe this is called aorta we have uh, this uh, tear mm. in that particular aorta mm -hmm. we have uh, a particular uh, Sember inside uh, which the heart uh, resides. So we, we have some fluid collection. Okay. So these are different types of uh, other emergencies also. But mm -hmm. the most important is uh, mm -hmm. and most common is the heart attack and the electrical block. Okay, so most common is the heart attack and the electrical block. And that uh, those uh, discussions which we have uh, recently and we had a fruitful discussion, I'm sure the viewers who have watched our show uh, must be benefited. Okay, thank you so much, thank Doctor, so for much. coming to our show. And uh, with this, we have come to the end of the show, viewers. And we hope that uh, we were able to answer all your queries in the best possible way. Way. And in our next episode, we will be discussing on some other important health issues. So if you have any queries, do join us next Saturday at 3.30 p.m. live. Till then, stay healthy, stay fit and keep watching Northeast Live. Goodbye. Thank you.